Five years ago, Stanley Road Primary was 100% Asian. Today, that's down to 89% and falling, a closer reflection of the catchment area's ethnic mix. The head knows all about the dangers of segregation. He was educated in apartheid era South Africa. One's early experiences do have an impact. Coming to live in Oldham all these years later and finding uh, you know, similar uh, patterns of uh, residential segregation. It would be a real shame if we were to sink into a voluntary form of apartheid here, you know, a word I thought had been abolished in 1994. Like the last government, the new coalition government is a keen supporter of faith schools. What will be the impact if parents are offered that option in Oldham? I think it will make what we're trying to do here uh, much more difficult. It gives people the option to retreat into short-term certainties um, when actually what we need is a sort of long-term view. Monitoring how schools promote cross-cultural harmony is the responsibility of the school inspection system. But in 2008, some Muslim and evangelical Christian schools were allowed to opt out of Ofsted and, in effect, become self-policing. They teamed up to form the Bridge Schools Inspectorate, or BSI. It emerged very quietly, and very few people knew that the new inspection sub subsystem, this independent bridge system, had been introduced. I think it was rather slipped through the system before anyone noticed what had happened. But not before Ofsted warned that any inspectorate covering fewer than 350 schools of five different faiths and types might lack rigor and objectivity. The BSI has just two faiths and currently inspects only 70 schools. Those concerns were largely to do with independence and objectivity. Mm. And over time, whether uh, a degree of familiarity or partiality might grow up uh, between inspectors and the schools that they were inspecting uh, if the numbers of schools are really quite small. She thought it might get too cosy, yes. in other words. Yes, over time. One Muslim school that's chosen not to use the BSI is Birmingham's Al Khan, even though the head is chairman of the Association of Muslim Schools that helped set it up. So you're on the BSI governing board, but you don't use the BSI for inspectors? Well, the reason being we felt that, um, you know, Ofsted is a, is, is a body that we would wish to remain with. Because? Uh, because I think it is a government-recognised body, and BSI, we felt, we consulted our parents. There were some views that we had that it may not have the credibility, for example. In 2009, the BSI inspected this private Muslim school in Ilford called Apex Primary. The inspectors rated the school good or outstanding in most respects. But there was no mention of the school having given a platform to this man, Haitham Haddad. Mr. Haddad was guest speaker at a school fundraising dinner. Stridently anti-Western, he's known for his provocative speeches like this one available on the internet. I always say that the conflict between Islam and the enemies of Islam is an ongoing conflict, and we should pay the price of this victory from our blood, and Muslims are ready to do so. Apex School told us that such comments were not made at the fundraising dinner or the school, and nor did they represent how the school teaches citizenship values. I'm not suggesting inspectors should be overly suspicious, but I am su suggesting that where <clears throat> they, they have um, evidence that some people associated with the school have in the past perhaps expressed extreme views of one sort or another, that, that, that they don't just simply, simply assume that because they said, well, no, we, we're not actually doing that anymore, that that's the case. The Bridge Schools Inspectorate told us that it's not in their remit to vet a school's fundraising speakers, and to suggest otherwise was bizarre. They also said Ofsted rated them as good, the highest grade possible. We're now looking at what we inherited in order to ensure that all independent inspectorates 
do their job properly. I'm clear that we need to be rigorous about ensuring that some of the concerns that have been raised, like the one that you raise now, are addressed by having a more rigorous regime overall. As the regime stands, however, there are some classes that completely escape inspection. Many children attend these classes in part-time schools outside their normal education. We identified one such network with connections to Saudi Arabia, teaching about 5,000 children in over 40 weekend clubs and schools. Some are held in state primaries hired out for the weekend. We wanted to see for ourselves what was being taught. So we sent a young Saudi undercover to one of the schools on the pretext of collecting textbooks for his younger sister. <laughs> They told him the textbooks came from London. So we followed the trail back to London. We traced the textbooks to this building in West London. Inside the building, there were boxes of books stacked everywhere. Our researcher was led to a storeroom where shelves were full of textbooks. He was told his sister would have to study everything in the book. The books turned out to be the official Saudi national curriculum. The ones we got were for 12 to 13 year olds. There is a hadith that says that the Jews were cursed by God. They also say here that the Jews, they look like monkeys and pigs. Jews look like monkeys and pigs. Yeah. It actually That's says exactly, that. Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. Other parts of the book aren't strictly Saudi. Yeah. 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 The effect of these uh, textbooks on the minds of young people is, is tremendous. You have 12 years of education uh, uh, that teaches the student to hate basically and practically everyone else, uh, be, be they Jews, Christians, and uh, other Muslims, to uh, believe that the world is divided into two camps, uh, the camps of the Muslims uh, and the camps of uh, the other, the infidel, the enemy. Saudi officials often complain that these are Quranic passages taken out of their historical context. So we showed the lesson to an academic known internationally for his expertise on the Quran. Is it wise to draw the attention of children to these passages? I would do it, but I would spend a, you know, a long lesson talking around this. Right. To, to present it cold as it seems to be here. Mm -hmm. as just part, in the the part, of the, yes, part of the teaching of Islam. Um, no, it's not wise. In the wrong hands, I think it, yes, I think it is ammunition for anti-Semitism. You could have a long theological argument in which you say that these things should be seen in a historic context. Fair enough, that's a matter for other countries. To my mind, it doesn't seem to me that this is the sort of material that uh, should be used in English schools. We obtained all 12 years of the curriculum being taught here in Britain. If there's any ambiguity about year eight, it's hard to see any for other years. Take this text for six-year-olds. So every religion other than blank, where they want to put the word Islam, is false. Whoever dies 
other than in Islam enters blank? The answer is fire, the fire, hellfire. In this book for 15-year-olds, they learn about Sharia law and its punishments. Thieves have a hand cut off for a first offence and a foot for a second. There are even diagrams showing children where the cuts must be made. For acts of gay sex, children are given a chilling message. The punishment, according to this book, is killing, execution, um, and it states the difference of opinion as to whether this should be done by stoning or burning with fire or throwing over a cliff. Also for 15-year-olds, the textbooks teach that Zionists want to establish world domination for Jews by inciting conflicts. I'm clear that we cannot have anti-Semitic material of any kind being used in English schools. This is not the first time that the Saudi school curriculum has been found in Britain. Three years ago, the BBC disclosed that offensive references to Jews were being taught in a different Saudi-run school. The material was removed and the Saudis also promised to clean up their curriculum. Not only have we eliminated what might be perceived as intolerance from all textbooks that were in our system, we have implemented a comprehensive internal revision and modernization plan. But not, it appears, comprehensive enough. This is the building we got the textbooks from. It's owned by the Saudi government. So we put our findings to the Saudi embassy. The embassy told us that the network of Saudi weekend schools had nothing to do with them. Nothing? These letters are from the embassy's own cultural bureau concerning the organization of the schools. The Saudi embassy also told us that anything taught in these weekend Saudi schools was, quotes, not affiliated or endorsed by them. Really, what's taught in these weekend schools is the Saudi national curriculum, which is published by the Saudi Ministry of Education. And when we spoke to a director of the Saudi school network, he confirmed that the Saudi Cultural Bureau, which is part of the Saudi embassy, has authority over all Saudi part-time schools. Regulators are now looking at closing this inspection loophole. Ofsted are doing some work in this area. They'll be reporting to me shortly about how we can ensure that part-time provision is um, better registered and better inspected in the future. But will all these changes to the inspection regime be enough to ensure that British school children are no longer exposed to religious fundamentalism in the classroom? John Ware reporting there. Well, the government says it is worried that a lack of integration in schools could be radicalising some young people, and it's planning to review the overall strategy on extremism to try and work out how to stop this from happening. There's more on this story on our website. Next week, in the run-up to the 2018 World Cup vote, we investigate FIFA. new drama from Jimmy McGovern next here on BBC One. Mackenzie Crook stars in Frankie's story in episode two of Accused. <laughs>